Ezekiel 37. From verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. Please, I want you to join us and read that passage. Everybody, let's start again. One, two, go. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man can these bones live and i answered oh lord god thou knowest again he said unto me prophesy upon these bones and say unto them O oh, you dry bones hear the word of the lord thus said the lord god unto these bones behold I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live and I will lay snails upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord so I prophesy as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a chicken and the bones came together bone to his bone and when I beheld lo the snails and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus says the lord god come from the four winds O breath and breathe upon this slain that they may live so i prophesy as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our part. Therefore, prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open up your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O oh, my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. Pray in the next one minute. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Ask the Lord to show you light tonight. The Lord is about to turn somebody's life around. The world is coming with such illumination that every darkness cannot stand it, both now and in the future. Holy Ghost, we call upon you tonight. You are the author of the world. Open our eyes to behold the wondrous things out of the world. And let everyone tonight, online, on site, experience your transformation thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray can your amen be better i want you to take note of something that happened in this passage If you look at verse 10, please get out verse 10 again. You will notice that I prophesy as he commanded me. And breath came into them and they lived. And they stood up upon their feet. What did you notice there? Can you shout it? An exceeding great army. This journey started with bones. Valley full of dry bones. At the end of the journey, dry bones stood up 
on their feet and became not just a civilian. I hope you know that the word army is talking about soldiers. I hope you know that. Warriors. The bonds became an exceeding great army. How did it happen that just few minutes ago bones that are disconnected and very dry no flesh no skin became not just a human being but an army how did you notice that this army just emerged from bones that are hopeless. I don't know whether you're following me. Now, if you go back to the first verse, the very first word, he said, and the hand of the Lord the hand of the Lord was what? Was upon me. What do you use your hand to do? You use your hand to walk, isn't it? See, there is a difference between the eyes of the Lord and the hand of the Lord. Whenever you see the Bible mention the hand of the Lord, it's talking about God's readiness to walk. He is saying, he's showing that God is set to walk. The hand of the Lord was upon me. Please, can you lower, lower the keyboard? Keep it there, but lower it properly. Lower it more. The hand of the Lord is upon me because. God is ready to do something now. He's about to walk. And he said, He carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. <laughs> See, when the hand of the Lord comes upon you, you know, during the 40 days of power, we saw that from the moment that the hand of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, the story changed. When the hand of the Lord comes upon you, upon your business, upon the work of your hand, upon your life, the struggle ends. If you read Acts of the Apostle, chapter 11 21 you see a group of people that went to evangelize antioch the bible said and the hand of the lord was with them a great number believed and turned to the lord the hand of the lord was upon me and he carried me out in the spirit of the lord where did he brought me he brought me into where into a valley please look at it I want you to follow this scripture. The hand of the Lord was upon me. And I want to decree and prophesy to somebody tonight that the hand of the Lord is already upon you. Yeah. Do you know how I got to know that? Several powers forces fought that you will be here today. How you came here was because of that hand. It has to carry you, not in the bus you came with. He has to carry you in the spirit of the Lord. Carry me. So there is a bus. There is a, 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 a transportation system that we are seeing here. What is the name of that transportation system? In the spirit. He carried me in the spirit of the Lord. 
and did what he set me can you say the word set say it set he set me down not in the valley he set me down where in the mist somebody say mist in the mist of the valley and this valley was what full of bones why did he not put me by the side of the valley why did he not put me by the front of the valley the hand carried me and put me at the middle of the valley and the whole valley up down front back full of bones god is about to change something concerning somebody's life and you see when you see these bones the way verse 2 and 3 described it he said the bones are very many and they are very dry eh? he caused me to pass by them round about he caused me i was not going by myself the hand caused me to pass by them round about and i behold that they were very many so many of these bones and lo Look, they were very dry. These are bones. And these bones are human bones. He saw hand, he saw leg, he saw every human bone. Now listen. You see, when you see something like this, he's talking about somebody who, not just that he has died, he has died, decayed, and there is no hope. People have forgotten about him. Every hope has been lost. But there is a God that turns a hopeless situation to a situation of glory. Verse 3. He said to me, son of man, can these bones live again? Is it possible for these bones to live again? Is there a hope that these bones will come alive again? And I answered, I don't know, you know. Why is it answering that way? Because humanly speaking, it looks impossible for these bones to live. Let me say this. I'm not just preaching. The Lord is talking to somebody. Your own life eh, has become so hopeless to you. Eh? There are times you have looked at your life. You ask yourself, why am I like this? When I was small, I was growing up. I was, I was following God. I was brought up in the church. Why has my life become so sinful that even when I decide that I will not sin, I see myself sinning more and more. And as if there is no more hope. Somebody's prayer life has become so dry such that you are running away from prayer. You can't pray alone. The only time you pray is when you pray with people. Somebody cannot see light anymore when you open the Bible. Such a hopeless situation. And God said, son of man, is there a hope for these bones? Can anything come out of this bone? Can this bone become alive again? And he said, oh Lord God, you know. There are some of us that the hopelessness around your life is not just visible to you. You can't contain it again. People around you are beginning to notice it because you are expressing it. Sometimes without knowing. The hopelessness around your marriage has become so obvious that 
Sometimes you are even doubting like Ezekiel. I don't even know whether God can do anything again. You know what this girl is saying? Oh Lord God, you know. That is, me I don't know. Eh? I don't know. There is a prophecy over my life. But the way things are going, I don't know whether they can come to pass again. My life is going opposite of what was said concerning, concerning it. Lord, you know. Noise. You are hearing a sound. sound a noise is a sound. Then shaking. What is it that is shaking? What is it that is shaking? The first thing was that there was a noise. The second thing was what? Shaking. What is it that was shaking? The bones began to shake. As they were shaking, shaking, they were warming up. After a while, they were shaking, you know, looking for their, their brothers and sisters. Eh? Then, the third stage, the shaking bones began to do what? Make movement. To locate. <laughs> These are the processes that goes on in the realm of the spirit to produce physical results. When you see the army standing, you wouldn't know that there was a noise. You wouldn't know that there was a shaking. You wouldn't know that there was what? A movement. Verse 8. And when I beheld, lo, the snooze and the flesh came upon them. So apart from the fact that they have located themselves, socketed themselves, the next thing was what? Flesh came. Flesh came. And skin covered them. The flesh is not the sentinel's skin. The flesh is the flesh. The skin is the cover. And now, they are normal. Now, did you notice something? Can you read that last part of, the last part of that verse? Let's read it one to go. But there was no bread in them. Great miracles has happened. Eh? Great things has happened, but but there is a but there. It's not yet complete. And do you know that at this stage, that Ezekiel is now in a mortuary? Eh? Because these are now human beings. Every part complete. The body complete. But there was no life in them. Are you following me at all? But the question is, why is it that the first prophecy did some work but did not bring it to complete or completion? Look at the next verse. Verse 9. Then he said to me, prophesy unto the wind. Now, the question is, what about the first one you prophesied? Are you getting me at all? You know, sometimes, th those of us that have critical mind, eh? the way you are thinking, when you see us praying, you say, ah, I've been praying this kind of prayer. Eh? I've prayed this kind of prayer before. Nothing happened. Let me tell you, if Ezekiel has stopped at this point, Great things has happened, but because it's not yet complete, it will not manifest. It will look as if you have not done anything. Are you getting me at all? What is different between dry bones and dead human body? What is different? They are not going to be useful. D dry bones are not useful. Dead human body are not useful. There is a way you will pray, 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 pray. Your, 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 let me use a woman that is trusting God for the fruit of the womb. You have prayed and pushed to the point where 
the, the, something has happened as you prayed and as you trusted God. It has come to a particular level. But because it has not manifested into conception, you will just feel that nothing is happening. Are you getting me? And when they say pray again, you say pray what? I have prayed before for this thing. It's not working. It's not happening. Remember, it was God that asked him to prophesy. Go back, go back so that you will see that the first prophecy captured the fact that bread will enter the bones. Did you notice something? Behold, I will cause bread to enter into you and you shall live. Is that not the prophecy? The prophecy before was you bones. I will cause bread to enter into you and you shall live. And as I prophesied, bread did not enter. He didn't leave. Even though some things happened, but they are not complete. He didn't resort to what I'm expecting. And this is where so many people normally give, give up. This is where so many people feel because they, a lot of things has already happened. But you need to pray again. You need to prophesy again. You need to press again. You need to push again for you to get into the reality of manifestation. It's at this point that you will hear the devil telling you, Sister, since 25 years you have, you have been praying for life partner, you are 37 now. Won't you rest and know that marriage is not for you? Join the women wing and follow them to do modern Sunday. It's, it's okay, you know that you are not going to marry again. But you don't know that the prayers you have been praying, the prof, you know, prophetic declarations you have been making has already produced some effect. It has already turned bones to what? To a human being. But that human being has not became what you are expecting. Are you following me? So tonight, we are at this second aspect, second level. There are some of us, tonight is going to be the night that after your declaration, I'm, I'm you know, prophesying and whatever, you will move from that realm where something has happened but not manifested to the manifestation. Yes. Prophesy to the wind. Say to the wind. Thus says the Lord, come from the four wind, O bread, and breathe upon this land that they may live. Ten. So I prophesy as he commanded me. And the bread came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet. Remember that Ezekiel is a civilian. You are not following me. Are you following me? The, the, the man of God that was prophesying is what? He is not a, an army. Don't you know what an army officer is? Before his very eyes, dry bones became an exceeding great army. Ah. Yeah. So this is an exceeding great army. This is what these bones are before. But when you are looking at them, you will not be able to see it. Yeah. How is it that I didn't know that these bones that are dry are the kingdom warriors. And he said, son of man, this is what your people are saying. Look at it. The next verse. This is what your people are saying. What are they saying? What are they saying? Our bones are dried. Our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Our bones are dry. 
our hope is lost we are cut off there is nothing that can come out of my life leave me I, I, I don't think I can be anything useful in the hand of God I have tried this thing it's not working I have tried it's not working there's no hope with me all hope is lost my bones are dried The things that they have been speaking to me about my life, about my future, none of them has come to pass. So this thing is not working. There's no hope. But God said it's not true. God said what? what? It's not true. It's not true. You see? Professor, I say, behold, my people, I will open your what? I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. I will open your... See, can you imagine that these people are alive, going to market, going to school, but they are inside graves. Spiritually, they are buried. Dead and buried. And their bones are dried up. In the grave. But physically, they are still moving about. There are so many human beings like that. God's own evaluation of them is that they are what? They are already buried. That's the true condition. And that's true. But God said, Tonight I'm opening up a grave. I am doing what? I am opening, I will open up your graves. And I will cause you to what? Come out of your graves. And bring you into the land of Israel. Now, let's look at the word grave. What is a grave? What is a grave? When somebody dies, you carry the person and bury and put in the grave and cover the grave, isn't it? When you cover the person, that burial and covering represents forgetting. Eh? The person is forgotten. You just bury your dead out of your sight. But God said, I'm opening it up. It looks as if they have forgotten you. It looks as if every hope has been lost. But the hand of God has come. And this hand has come to lift you out of that situation and bring you up so that you'll be able to stand and fulfill the purpose of God for your life. Amen. This exceeding great army that the hand of God, the spirit of God, and the word of God worked together to bring into being Do you know that the army is not for nothing? When you decide to have warriors and army, you know that you are, you, you, there are enemies to fight, isn't it? Isn't it? When you say kingdom warriors, emergence of kingdom warriors, it is because there are enemies to fight. And God has, from what we saw, worked that kingdom warriors, exceeding great army, will emerge from a hopeless situation, hopeless bones. Are you following me at all? You may not look like it, like we saw in the case of Gideon. When God said to him, go in this your might. He said, me? Which might? I'm the least in my father's house. And my family is the least. I cannot go. I don't have what it takes. But God said, I am hanging on you. It is you that I will use. Even though currently... You are looking at yourself and there's no hope. 
but from these hopeless bones, hopeless dry bones, struggling, an army is emerging. Warriors that will fight kingdom battles are coming up. But one thing that God is asking you to do is to do your part. You have to cooperate with him. In every any time you see God eh, doing something on the earth, there's always a cooperation between God and man. If anything will happen in your life, it will not be by God alone. There is an aspect of you an action you will take as a person for that which God wants to do to come to pass. You must play a role. There is a part you must play in making sure that what God is wanting to do comes to pass, becomes a reality. Let me tell your neighbor, there is an aspect of the work that you must do. If God is to bring salvation to somebody's life tonight, Salvation. You know what salvation is? Do you know what salvation is? You come to a situation where you realize that I am a sinner and I really need to, to, to be saved from, from sin. I want to experience salvation. I want to stop living in sin because you can actually stop living in sin. There's a part you must play in that business jesus has died on the cross for your salvation but you have to play a role of repenting from your sins and saying to god i am sorry and i'm going to cooperate with you never to return back that is repentance i am sorry i will not go back and when god finishes his part He's expecting you to go back. There are things that it is you that we do. For instance, when Jesus said, if it is your hand that will cause you to sin, do what? Who will cut the hand? God or you? Who will cut the hand? God or you? You are the one. Don't say, God, this hand has been causing me to sin. Do what? Come and cut it off. Lord, you know this hand has been my problem. I have really wanted to serve you, oh, oh God of heaven. Eh? I have had your call. Oh. I know you called me. But, you see, you know, even you know, that it is this my hand that is the problem. Oga, sister, cut it. God is saying, do what? Cut it. You are the one that will do it. It's not God that will go to your same partner and warn her or warn him. It is you that we say to your same partner, enough is enough of sin. I don't want again. I want to follow Jesus. There is a plan for my life. God wants to make out an army out of my life. I don't want to continue in hopeless life, living as if I'm alive, but I am dead and buried, covered by grave. So, as men that are ready to cooperate with him, you will see God doing his best over your life. Now, we have prayed. The first prayer we prayed, we have come to a point. We are going to push again the second one. Are you seeing the reason for the second prayer now? You know we have prayed before. Have we prayed before? Yes. But how many times did Ezekiel pray here? How many times? Twice. The first one worked. But the second one worked to what? To complete. So the prayer we are going to pray now, even though we have prayed before, but I want you to come up again with faith and high expectation. Because whatever that is remaining will be perfected in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise on your feet. An army is God is receiving a great army 
out of hopeless dry bones. Can you pray and say to God, I am ready to cooperate with you. What you want to make out of my life, I am ready to cooperate with you. Whatever you are expecting me to do, listen, if Ezekiel did not do his own part, son of man, prophesy. And instead of prophesying, he's quarreling or he's chewing gum or he's sleeping or he's discussing outside. Nothing will happen. No. Can you just pray and say, God, I will do my part. I have come tonight because I am part of this army that must arise. I am in the number of this exceedingly great army that must come. <laughs> that must emerge. Oh, Jesus. You can make something out of my life. The hand of the Lord is upon your life already. The Spirit of the Lord is carrying you tonight. Because you want to turn dry bones to an army. You want to turn a situation that is hopeless to a situation of glory. A shameful and disgraceful situation to a glorious circumstance. If you are here tonight, and you don't want to get a sense, surrender to Jesus I'm ready to give my life to Christ I'm ready to cooperate with you to do my part please pray Jesus come into my life Jesus you can save me from sin you can save me from sin you saved Mary Magdalene from sin you can save me too. My struggle must be over. Because the hand of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He's carrying me. He's carrying me. In the name of Jesus, please look up. Look at me. If you are sitting down, just stand up. Just manage to stand. There are diverse work God wants to do tonight. I say, anytime you see the hand of the Lord, know that He's ready to work. But the first of them, the first of them is in the life of someone. Someone. Who is saying to God, even people around me are saying there is no hope with this one. They have looked down on me. Even myself, I have tried. But I see myself falling back to sin again and again. But since your hand can turn a dry bone to an army, that is a hope for me. And I want to assure you, my brother, my sister, that is a hope for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying?
Stop condemning yourself. Stop feeling so guilty that you know and then something, something will be telling you that just forget about this Christianity. It's not working for you. No. No. Maybe some, nobody has guided you well and this is how God has brought you here to help you and you are going to receive that help to tonight. If you are, that's the first category of prayer. Please, if you are perfect, you are holy, you are righteous, you don't need the grace of God, the help of God. Don't join us in this prayer. This prayer are for those who are saying, God, I have been trying, but have been failing. But you can help me to stand. The Bible said the army, they stood up on their feet. You will stand on your feet. Somebody who has been struggling with pornography, masturbation, lying, and you have tried everything, you are still there. Tonight, the hand of God will, will break that yoke in your life. And you will stand in righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. All you just need to do is to say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I, don't, I, don't, I cannot deny what I know. I know it's true. I tell lies. I know it. I lost. I watch pornography. I commit masturbation. I'm a homosexual. I'm a lesbian. I know myself. Others may not know me, but I know myself. Because you died for me on the cross of Calvary, that is a hope for me. And I leverage on that hope tonight. I come to the cross. You can help me. You can save me. If I have such honest and sincere people, can you lift up your hand, your right hand, and say, say to God, this is who I am. This is me. I don't know about another person, but my life has been hopeless when it comes to sin. Sometimes I will quarrel and get so angry that I will be surprised at myself. The kind of things I, I will destroy out of anger and rage. But Jesus, you can save me. You can save me. Please, if you are raising up your hand, please can you just come to the altar? I want to pray for you at the altar. Quickly, just come. I'm talking to a set of people that are sincere tonight. They are saying to God, I don't know about others, but I know myself. I know that the hand of God, the spirit of God, the word of God can turn a hopeless dry bone to an army. That hand can save my life.